Um, I'd just like to make uh, a few remarks about something that is also on the agenda today in front of the Executive Committee, and that is uh, the report on the next steps for the building of SmartTrack. Uh, this report uh, asks the Executive Committee and ultimately, of course, City Council to approve a number of recommendations that will advance SmartTrack to the construction stage. Uh, as the report itself notes, SmartTrack and Regional Express Rail will together transform how heavy rail infrastructure is used within the city and the region to support mobility. SmartTrack will make it a reality for thousands of Torontonians every day to use surface rail conveniently, affordably, and sooner to get around inside the City of Toronto. In effect, it will give everyone in the City of Toronto more transit options within the city itself uh, to get to work or to school or wherever they happen to be going for the cost of a TTC fare. The report recognizes, and I quote, no other city project is expected to have the transformative citywide impact of the SmartTrack project, a close quote. SmartTrack will provide real relief for transit riders precisely because it does give them options for getting around inside the City of Toronto and because it uses existing surface rail lines uh, so that relief will come at much sooner than any other transit project that we're building. The report also concludes that the cost of SmartTrack, which will provide a service level of 6 to 10 minutes of peak service frequencies at 6 new stations and 8 existing stations, remains within the projected city budget of $1.2 billion. Staff are also recommending that Metrolinks will be responsible for future operating and maintenance costs, including life cycle maintenance costs. And this simplified funding relationship will ensure there is no long-term financial impact on the city once SmartTrack is built. It will provide for a more predictable uh, arrangement. City Council has advanced SmartTrack through a number of important milestones over just more than three years. The report we're discussing today gives us a path forward to actually start building SmartTrack. We will be soon at the stage where an actual RFP will be issued uh, to uh, pick someone to build the stations. I know that residents of the city want us to get on with building SmartTrack and the Relief Line and every other transit priority project, and I am committed to delivering that council-approved transit network, every single element of it. And we know from data released by Metrolinx earlier this year that we must continue on this path. Metrolinx concluded that SmartTrack will deliver nearly $4 in economic and social benefits for every dollar spent on construction costs. The Metrolinx analysis found the overall benefits of SmartTrack substantially outweighed the costs of building the stations. These stations will generate $4.58 billion in economic and social benefits, billions more than the $1.19 billion needed to actually build the stations. We've reached an important milestone in the life of SmartTrack, but it is also an important milestone when it comes to getting on with actually building transit in the City of Toronto, especially in light of the longer time that it will take to complete projects like the Relief Line, which is the subject itself of extensive current investment and work. I'm confident that a majority of councillors will be very anxious to get on with building transit in our city and will once again vote to support SmartTrack and to push this project forward. It will provide real transit options, real relief, and real economic benefits at a reasonable cost. I look forward to the discussion at the Executive Committee today and at Council in the forthcoming meeting. Questions? Oh, yes, sorry, sorry. When it comes to the calling ice off the CN Tower, have you had discussions with city staff on that? Is there anything that can be done to make it safer? I have not myself had any discussions, but uh, obviously when they uh, decided to make the decision to close the tower yesterday, they were in touch with uh, city officials, and I think this is something that uh, is, is not confined to the CN Tower. It's a particularly high, particularly, uh, you know, visible uh, structure inside the city, but there were pieces of ice, big pieces of ice falling off a number of the high buildings in the city and this is uh, something that uh, you know came about obviously in uh, with greater frequency during an unusual weather event but I think it is something we'll have to take a look at uh, just in terms of making sure that everything that can be done is done and that safety uh, of uh, people who live here and work here uh, is paramount. Mayor 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 you said that our taxpayer money wouldn't be used to fund smart track, but obviously the city building fund is derived solely from taxpayer money. Will you concede that there's obviously taxpayer Funding going into this project. Well, actually, I think uh, I'll just uh, challenge the uh, the premise of the question because I never said taxpayer money wouldn't be used. All money that is going into this project is taxpayer money. I mean, whether it's development charges or whether it's uh, money coming from the other governments or whether it's money that is coming from the city building fund, this is all uh, pretty much taxpayer funded. Uh, and so what I did say was that property taxes would not specifically be raised to pay for smart track. And that, I'm sorry, no, no, Jennifer, with respect, please let me finish my answer and don't interrupt me. I don't think that's very polite. What I did say 
was that uh, property taxes would not specifically be raised uh, to pay for smart truck and that is actually a commitment that is being kept. The city building fund was created a few years ago to specifically provide for the funding of transit projects, not specifically smart track. A small portion of the city building fund will be used uh, to uh, pay some of the debt servicing costs on uh, the smart track project and so I think in terms of the question of whether property taxes are specifically being raised in order to pay for smart track, they're not. What about you the timeline on it? Seat. You said six years. Uh, uh, will it be done in six years? And also, can you address the issue of, you said 22 stops at the time, we're down to six new stops. You know, I've said many times here, and I'll say it again today, that what is actually going to be built uh, is something that is different than was originally conceived of. And there's no question that the time frame is going to be a little longer than we had contemplated for a variety of reasons that just have to do with the process that uh, has to be followed in order to uh, get these things done. But I will point this out. In three years, in three years, we have an RFP about to happen to build new stations, new transit stations in Toronto. The first new transit stations actually built since the ones uh, that are, uh, you know, that are the subject of the new subway opening. Uh, secondly, we've, we've achieved billions of dollars in financial support from the other governments to make this happen. Thirdly, uh, we've achieved very significant progress on fare integration and on the fact that we said that people would be able to ride on these trains for the price of a TTC fare, and we've largely achieved that now. Huge progress that's been made. You know, when you look at it, something like fare integration was something that's been talked about, I, I will exaggerate slightly, I don't think by much though, if I say for decades, it's been talked about for a long time. We've actually got something done on that. We've actually got to the stage where we have the, uh, the, the, the uh, public consultations that have been held with respect to the stations and now we're moving forward to the next stage which is an RFP. We've got an agreement with the province on how this is going to be paid for. We have an agreement with them with respect to the uh, maintenance agreements and so are there uh, a few fewer uh, stations than we talked about? Yes there are. Will there be some changes on the west end with respect to that being handled other than through uh, tunneled construction? Yes there will. Uh, will the timetable will be slightly different? Yes, it will. But is, is there going to be a transit line uh, that is going to be on surface rail moving people through the city of Toronto that was just an idea three years ago? Yes, there will. And, and my determination to make sure it happens is absolute. Today's uh, vote and the vote that I'm sure will be positively uh, you know, cast at the City Council next week um, to me is a huge milestone on a, at a City Council and in a city that has traditionally taken you know, years and years and sometimes decades to move these things forward. And, and while we're at it, I'll comment on the relief line as well. You know, I find it passing strange that people talk about the timetable of the relief line. This line has been talked about, I think, I think since the 1970s. And you name me a mayor and name me a city council that's done anything about it until this mayor and this city council, where we have $100 million coming from all three governments being invested in the actual design and planning of that line. We have extensive public consultations that have taken place that resulted in a change in the route, but we've now agreed on the route. And now, as written up in one of our daily newspapers today, there are actually letters being sent out to people saying, we may affect your property by actually building this subway line. And so I just would say to you, this project is very real. It is proceeding at a, at a, a pace that is as, uh, you know, as quick as one can, given all the things that has to, have to be done. But compared to every previous administration that has talked about the relief line for literally decades, this administration, my administration, under my leadership, is actually moving forward with this project, as we are with SmartTrack, as we are with the entire network transit plan. And we are not doing the old Toronto thing of building one project, focusing on one project at a time and, and, and admiring our work and just saying that's enough. We are, a, we are responding to a huge deficit that had arisen with respect to transit in the city and addressing it many projects at a time and they're all moving forward. And I'm very happy about that. I'm proud of that. And I think the people are happy about it too. Mayor, 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 you said in 2016 that the old plan, the three stop plan, was based on essentially on a scrap of paper, that it wasn't a proper process. We did it based on no design. Since then, there has been uh, an unwillingness of council to see if there is a value for money uh, comparison. Council didn't want to see that. There have been rushed design work. There have been 
hand-drawn sketches that have gone into the cost estimating, how can the public be confident that this process is providing a transit plan that actually provides good value for money and is the right transit plan for this part of the city? Well, you characterize uh, all of the work that's been done the way you did. Uh, I would characterize it slightly different. Uh, when the council actually made its decision uh, to support, its latest decision of many to support the Bloor Danforth subway extension to Scarborough, uh, it was based on a 59-page report with seven attachments done by professional public servants and with some outside help. Uh, and I would say that that is a very extensive piece of professional work that was done by those people to recommend to the council uh, that we would proceed with the Bloor Danforth subway extension. And so I think this is going to do great things for Scarborough. I'm very optimistic it's going to attract significant numbers of jobs and investment and residential accommodation in Scarborough exactly as transit is intended to do. It is going to make it easier for people to move around the city and go to work in Scarborough or for Scarborough residents to work uh, downtown in the city of Toronto. And uh, really what I'm focused on now, based on the 59-page report and the seven attachments and all the debates, is moving forward with the entire network transit plan and getting transit built in this city. Because I think people um, found it in the past uh, uh, frustrating that they would see their city councillors and their other governments not working together, changing their mind, re-debating, re-litigating these transit projects instead of building them. And I think the votes we've taken, the reports they're based on, uh, are sufficient uh, to allow us to have the confidence that we can proceed. I would just point out that the last vote uh, on this subject had a two, basically two-thirds, I think one percentage point under two-thirds of people voting in support of proceeding with this project. And to me, uh, that's pretty good going when it comes to this council uh, or any other previous council. Mayor Tory, a lot of uh, community uh, activists in the area of Etobicoke Woodbine are looking forward to having a CBA. That's very important <coughs> to them. Um, what guarantee can you offer these people that it will one will be negotiated? Well, I would say that I'm very heartened by the fact that it was a condition of the City of Toronto there be community benefits and there be an agreement to uh, to put that into place and that those involved have agreed that they will have uh, community benefits as part of this and that they spell out in the report and in an agreement to follow specific percentages of jobs that will go uh, to people both during construction and in the permanent uh, development that follows so both the gaming facilities but also I think more importantly all of the other uh, things that will be around that on the Woodbine lands. And so uh, I think we'll hear a bit of commentary today about saying maybe there's a little bit more we can do, but the bottom line is that I'm very, very happy that there are going to be very significant jobs, thousands, I think, when you add it up, uh, both in construction and in uh, uh, the permanent uh, development up there that will go to local people, and I think will make a big contribution uh, to helping with uh, some of the economic challenges faced by those residents of the city. Oh, Jamie? Well, I mean, this was, uh, it was a great game last night, and it was exciting, and it's great for the city, and they sort of uh, got back on their game, and uh, the, uh, the speedsters were speeding, and so uh, we've got to have one more to get uh, to a tied series, and then it's a whole new ball game. So uh, I'm, uh, as a Leaf fan, I'm thrilled, and now tonight we've got the FC and the Raptors uh, that are both uh, in uh, very important games, and so I wish them well. We were supposed to have a bit of a flag-raising uh, ceremony yesterday, but that was cancelled by the weather, but the uh, sentiment of the whole city, starting with the mayor, and everybody uh, throughout the uh, the city is with our teams as they continue to do so well. Mayor Tory, any word on when you're going to meet with PC leader Doug Ford? No, uh, I was delighted to see that uh, Ms. Horvath put out her platform yesterday and there were a number of things in there really which were a reiteration of things she said when she was here at City Hall, uh, including 50% support for uh, for the um, operating uh, needs of the uh, Transit uh, Commission, uh, as well as uh, support for Toronto Community Housing and uh, significant additional investment in mental health, all of which, as you know, are certainly important priorities of mine and the City Council's. Uh, and as yet, uh, we haven't got a date for a meeting with Mr. Ford. He's I think putting out different elements of his platform on a, a kind of a, a, a gradual basis and I guess once we see uh, what's out then we'll see what uh, transpires from there. Thanks very much. We'll see you at the executive.